If your creative push has helped you, you can help the show by becoming a patron on Patreon. For $20, $10, $5, or $1 a month, you can not only show your support of the podcast, but also do so much to help to cover all the costs. Head to yourcreativepush.com slash Patreon to find out all of the goodies that you can get when you become a patron at each of the levels, and thank you in advance for helping the show. Your Creative Push, episode 188. You don't know how to do something. Just pretend you do and just try. Just do it. Welcome to Your Creative Push, the podcast that pushes you to pursue your creative passions. I'm your host, Youngman Brown, and my guest today is Kelly Killigan. Kelly is a South Jersey-based tattoo and fine artist specializing in line and dot work. Among the many things that Kelly draws, tattoos, and sculpts, she focuses closely on the various relationships between humans and animals and how they can be used to understand human psychology. Uh, And Kelly, thank you, first of all, for coming on the show today. I was wondering, could you start out by telling us a little bit about how you got to the point you are today in your artistic career? Sure. Um, Thank you for having me, first off. It's awesome. I guess to start off, the best jumping off point would be um, I went to Moore College of Art and Design. Um, in Philadelphia. Mm-hmm. And there I got my bachelor's degree in fine arts. And I studied um, sculpture specifically, but I kind of did a little bit of everything. Um, so I'm trained as a contemporary fine artist. But during that time, I kind of got into tattooing because um, I met up with some really amazing mentors who took me under their wing. So I've been tattooing at 777 Tattoos since 2012, 2013 about. And I've been there ever since. So that's like probably the hardest part is like trying to figure out how to frame that for people. Right. But I think um, right now where I am is I'm a full-time tattoo artist. So that's five days a week. And then whatever time I have left, I devote to making art. So I do a lot of craft shows. I do um, an online store. And so it's part-time work that... um is fulfilling and part-time work that is fulfilling professionally and monetarily. So I, I love them both. They're just almost polar opposites. So it's very interesting to try to balance the two. Yeah, I think you you nailed it when you said it's a tough balancing act. And I think a lot of people can relate um, when they either have something that they define themselves as, like like you said, you're trained as a fine artist, but you are, are also doing the tattooing. And for, for people that have um, one passion that they're kind of used to and another passion that they're kind of trying to push or they don't know which one to push, it's it's tough. And it's tough to explain to people uh, what you are. You know, I'm a writer, but I'm also a podcaster now. And it's like, <laughs> I I don't have any time to write because I'm, I'm kind of all in with the podcast. And yeah. but I still want to call myself a writer because that's what that's how the podcast started. And it's, it's really it is tough to when you have multiple disciplines to 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 walk that fine line. So do you have any advice? Or are you kind of in the thick of it trying to figure it out as well? Yeah, I think I'm pretty far in the thick of it. But <laughs> What's interesting is that I never want to sacrifice one for the other. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I want to stay true to both. I am devoted to doing a great job as a tattoo artist. And, you know, I'm doing really well in that respect. I have a great following. My clients are awesome. I'm doing work that I'm proud of, but there's something missing. So then that's where I fill in the holes with the work that I make that I find fulfilling. But with all the time constraints and having a job that's so creatively um, involved, you know, it's mentally draining and creatively draining, which, which is great because, you know, it shows, you know, I'm doing well, but it's really hard to find that energy to put into work that I want to do. But it's so rewarding when I do shows or sell work online and people contact me and and they want work that I've made that Mm. no one commissioned me to make, you know, no one asked me, uh, can you do this for me? Cause I want it on my body. It's more. So I like that thing that you made. I get that. I would like to, to have that and see it every day. So that is crazy to me. And so I think that's what kind of pushes me to keep going and, and work to kind of balance out the two a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. And you you do have a a nice following. Like I told you before the interview, my wife is a huge fan of yours and she put me on to on to you and she is really looking forward to getting a tattoo from you as well. Um so I I 
you know, for me, I'm always like happy to when people reach out and say, oh, the podcast is really helping. And I don't know, that's like kind of my currency. So I can't imagine what it's like to to know that somebody's uh, like you're you're able to put a permanent print on somebody like you said. Yeah, must, must be awesome. Yeah, it's it's really amazing. You know, there's mo- multiple moments where I'm like, holy crap, you, you're letting me do this. Like you trust me that much. <laughs> Um, it's home. Sure? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, Oh wow, really? You want me to do this? Okay, here we go. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. It, you mentioned in there that, uh, sometimes you get to a point where you, you know, you just don't feel like doing the work or you're, you're already mentally and creatively drained. Uh, I think a lot of people can relate to that, especially people that have full-time gigs that are, are non-creative and, and yeah. suck up a lot of their time so that when they do get home, uh, and it is time that, 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 sh- small amount of time that they're able to create and they're just drained like you. Um, how do you push through that and, and kind of utilize that time to actually pursue the things that you want to pursue? It's, it's really difficult and um, I struggle with it a lot. You know, sometimes I'm super guilty of deciding to stay at home and, and uh, just watch Netflix. Yes. And <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. And I think not only artists, but I think all human beings right now are struggling with not being motivated to do anything because we're kind of attached to our devices and, you know, Mm -hmm. everything's so instant and it's, it's right there. You know, you want something, you get it. Want to watch a movie, go put it on, you know? So to be able to get the motivation to sit down and work at something that might not even produce anything. There's so many times where I sit down in my studio and I have the intent to make something, but I'm sitting there and, you know, I'm sketching, I'm thinking I'm writing, but, nothing actually physical comes out of that session. And you have to remember that that's not a waste. You know, that is now a backbone that you can work off of for the next time you sit down to work on some, to work on that project. So it's really difficult to, to get that motivation going. I also think that it's more of a tragedy to not try. You know, you could either sit there and do nothing and wish that you could make these things or put this work out into the world that you want to see and then feel so tired to do it. But I think it's more of a tragedy to not even try because you don't know what could happen if you just put your mind to it. So that kind of makes me get going. Or usually deadlines are a great way to get motivated. Mm -hmm. I'm notorious for pushing things to the last minute, but that 48 hour grind before a deadline, I am so productive. (laughs) Yeah. We talk about that all the time on the show that those self-imposed deadlines are are hard ones to keep, but when you can actually have like an audience that you're promising that you're going to put work out to or clients as well, it it just gets done. Um, and to, to kind of shorten those, those deadlines the best you can. But I totally agree with you too. Um, and, and to, to see that time when, uh, nothing physical comes out of it and it's not a waste, you know, it's like, you're getting those, those things out of the way, you're getting them out of your head. Uh, and I, I always find that even when you don't create something good, as long as you are kind of enjoying the, the act of creating, mm-hmm. uh, for an hour or two hours, it's kind of like going to the gym. You just feel better after it's like you exercise those kind of creative muscles and then can kind of, you know, go about your day and feel successful about your day. Yeah. Yeah. Cause the, the longer you put it off, the rustier you, you get. Mm-hmm. I'm fortunate enough to be able to be forced to make work because I constantly have tattoos that I have to draw for. So, you know, every night and every morning I'm drawing and I'm working at it, but all of those are commissioned by people. So it's, you know, those are their deadlines. Those are, that's what they want me to do. So what I found helpful is to make my own kind of fake deadlines Um, maybe I don't have a show coming up or maybe there's no specific reason to get something done, but I'll make it up. Um, and it's, it's hard to trick yourself into that, but I also do these little practices where I'll set my, um, my stopwatch or my, um, alarm clock on for, I don't know, like an hour from now and I'll sit down and I'll force myself to do whatever it is that I want to get done for that full hour, no distractions and just do it. And then, when the timer goes off, then I'm free to do whatever. I could walk away or I can keep going or, you know, I can go and get some ice cream and watch Netflix for 30 minutes and then get back at yes. it, you know. It's tr- just tricking yourself. <laughs> yeah, whenever there's ice cream at the end of the journey, you can always get there quicker. <laughs> Wait, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I think t- timers are really good and, and just – The Pomodoro method is really good too. Just knowing that there's kind of an end time rather than this like open-ended, 
kind of thing that you're getting yourself into. Sometimes it's nice to get into that flow, um, but to to kind of have an end point to it uh, definitely helps. Yeah, it gets overwhelming. Yeah, for sure. You mentioned that the immediate gratification, which I think I agree that, you know, humans in general are just anything that they want, they can get immediately. And I think that that type of mentality isn't necessarily good if you're trying to start a creative career because it takes so much, um, first of all, so much learning and working on your craft, whatever your craft is, Mm -hmm. uh, to get better, but then to, to build an audience. And then if you want to make money out of it, all of that takes a lot of time. And I think that that's something that definitely holds people back too, is that not wanting to, to work hard and to work for a long time for something. Yeah, definitely. So with your art, I know you, um, and also I think you went to school for this as well. Uh, the the idea of animals versus humans and yeah. the psychology behind that. Could you talk about that a little bit? Because that's really interesting to me. Sure. Yeah, my thesis throughout college, well, my senior year specifically, but my entire breadth of work was usually revolving around how we interact with, with animals, specifically mm-hmm. domestic animals, and, and what that says about us. I, I just... In my own daily life, I just am always questioning what we do as human beings because I think we are so weird. Um, We're so strange. We are so strange. And I don't know if it's because I just never grew up with religion. So I don't have any kind of ideas about a higher being. And, you know, this is how we are supposed to be. I think looking at it from a perspective of we are animals inherently, we are animals, but there's something different about us. You know, I, I don't think there's, anything we can compare ourselves to. You know, we take animals and we use them as either resources or companions, or we treat them like humans and domestic animals, such as your cats or your dogs. I think that they're just so interesting because they're not quite an animal, but they're not a human either. You know, Mm -hmm. we attribute all these human characteristics to them. You know, we give them a name. We even go as far as dressing them up. Um, they come with us everywhere. Um, or they're just, you know, a comforting kind of person to come home to and maybe even talk to. So there's all these things that, you know, they're companions. Um, we don't have them so that we can eat them someday, like you might with a pig or a cow. So it's very interesting to me that they're animals, but they're, they can't exist in the wild necessarily. You know, we've bred dogs to be these things that don't even look like a wild dog anymore you know they've pushed in faces and little legs that can't even procreate on their own so it's just very strange to me so there's all these different areas that fascinate me and i usually make a lot of work that revolves around all these different concepts yeah do you have pets i do i have two cats and i have a dog and what's interesting is all my life i've only ever had cats Mm. so i think that's why the the image of a cat reappears constantly in my work, but this is the first, the past year was the first year that I've had a dog and it's my first experience owning a dog. So I guess you could say I'm a cat person, but what's interesting is that I understand dog people. And I think that depending on which one you're drawn to, and some people think that they're drawn to both, which is great, but I think it says a lot about who you are as a person, you know, it, we're going to get really deep here, but um, so Go for it. <laughs> to me, I think, The relationship that I have with cats is, I don't want to compare it and say it's more deep than someone's relationship with their dog, because I can't say that, you know, everyone has their own experience. But in my own experience, I think that it's so much more rewarding for a cat to show me affection or show any ounce of caring at all, because it's not prompted of them. It's not in their, you know, personality to you know, give a damn, basically. Dogs were made by man to be companions, to be our best friend, basically. They're happy. Um, I mean, every dog is different, but I think, you know, generally dogs are going to be drawn to humans. They want to be around people. They are supposed to be that way. And so, so I think it's very interesting for me to, to kind of analyze cats specifically and my relationship to them, but now having a dog and seeing the differences. So, um, so yeah, obviously I'm very weird about pets. <laughs> well, my wife and I are obsessed with our dogs, like in an unhealthy way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like we spend all of our free time with our two dogs. And, uh, I think it's, that's a really interesting point you brought up because yeah, we're all, uh, at least my opinion is, a uh, like cat, like cats don't like me and, uh, <laughs> like cats, uh, like they're, 
they don't never want to play with you. And I, I guess that it, it's, you're exactly right about um, the difference between, I guess, cat people and dog people. But w- my wife and I are always like questioning whether our dogs really love us or they just want food and shelter. Yeah. And I think about that too. <laughs> yeah. We trick ourselves though. We're like, no, nah, they love us. They love us so much. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, you said you do mostly art with cats, but uh, the the one piece that I saw of yours, the human animal. Yeah. It's a, a dog, right? With a human ha- hand That's, as its head. It's very, um, it's interesting because my initial concept was a cat. And that, that entire project, my, my entire thesis is basically based around this little doodle that I did in my sketchbook when I was totally art blocked. I, I didn't know what I was going to do. I had like all these different ideas and I couldn't narrow it down. So I just started doodling for fun. And it was this really, ah, is is really simple and not even attractive looking cat. Uh, it definitely had like a cat tail and paws. And then it had like a really ugly hand for a head. And then I drew that over and over again. Some of them were like crowd surfing, like cats on hands. And it was just so strange. But then um, I had a really awesome mentor who told me to sculpt them because once you cross that barrier, like when it's a drawing, it's funny and, and you know interesting. But once you make it come alive, it suddenly takes a turn and it gets really serious. And that's kind of what happened. What I did was I thought I was going to go into it as this cat sculpture with a hand for a head. But what ended up happening was I took a bunch of references of greyhounds because I liked their body shapes. I liked how you could see their muscles. And I feel like sculpting a cat is really difficult. And it's just a big mush ball, basically. You know, it's (laughs) it's fuzzy and I'm working in clay. And I just, I didn't see these things as being fuzzballs. I saw them as kind of stoic creatures almost like a sphinx would be um Hmm. so i i used um greyhound references so then the the cat image kind of morphed into a dog so it's a little bit of both and i made sure that i didn't I, i tried not to zero in on one or the other and everyone who has ever come across these pieces have called it either a cat or a dog and i wonder if it's because of their experience you know maybe if they're a cat person they call it a cat if they're a dog person they call it a dog i'm not sure but they're a little bit of both that's cool to have it kind of be an ambiguous and and up to the to the viewer um i guess i called it a dog because it especially when the one with it laying down Mm -hmm. it just for some reason that like I couldn't stop looking at it because it made so much sense. Like it, it should exist. <laughs> like yeah. it looked like it should be a real thing, like not made up for it. So you did a really great job with that. I guess just the way its legs were though, uh, reminded me of like the way that my dogs lay down. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a cat lay that way. <laughs> so. I, I think that might've been an actual cat reference that I might've used for. Oh, that's so cool. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting. It's probably one of my favorite series and I've kind of, reproduced it in another way of doing multiples of these resin cast figures but um i'm looking forward to working with these images a little bit more in in work in the future yeah that's really cool and i also love the part of the story where you were doodling for fun and you're kind of in a creative block and then this like little doodle that you made turn into like your thesis turned into like such a a big thing um so just i think for people listening you know just doodle (laughs) just like don't don't be afraid to like let those like weird ideas that come out just like really like push them as far as you can yeah and it kind of goes back to the thought of oh man i just sat there for two hours and i didn't make anything well go Mm -hmm. back and look at what you did do did you write anything down did you doodle anything did you did you think of anything when you were there you know it's you have to kind of take it all into account yeah and and also yeah looking back at your old stuff that might not have made an impact to you or may might not have made sense to you back then when you can look at them with a a new set of eyes fresh eyes maybe a year or two later uh with new experience and stuff like that and new ideas like they can definitely merge into like some something great exactly yeah um I was wondering, did you have any other kinds of like forms of resistance as we already talked a little bit about just, you know, (laughs) needing a a deadline to get stuff done, but are are there any other kind of fears or or things that kind of hold you back? Uh, Yeah, I think we've all experienced them, but self doubt is a huge one, I think. Um, And it's doubting your abilities, doubting your skill, but also doubting that 
you can even do this, you know, is this okay? And that also goes back to me being a tattoo artist, you know, is this okay? Is, are you sure you want me to do this? But uh, it's all just insecurities and it's really, it's really easy to listen to them and kind of freeze and you just don't do anything. But I think the better option is to take those feelings and kind of set them aside and ignore them, keep working, keep going at it. It's interesting because it's not only doubts that I have in myself that I'm imposing on myself. You know, I am I feel these insecurities and I'm kind of just being negative on myself. But it's also the idea of just being an artist and society's standards of whether or not that's OK. Um, I think we've gotten a lot better at being accepting of artists. And I think with things like Instagram and even Facebook and YouTube, you know, art is everywhere and people are coming out of the woodwork because it's so accessible and it's, it's difficult, but also easy to do because you have so many more tools, but there's this little voice in the back of my head that says, um, I think Neil Gaiman and uh, Amanda Palmer, they, they kind of always talk about like these fraud police people that are saying, get a real job. Um, so I kind of have that in me. And I think a lot of artists and designers and creative people do where it's almost like society is, is in the back of your head saying, you can't be an artist. You can't be this thing because that's not a real job. That's not important. But you also have to realize that people are going to be so much more accepting of a job that has a tangible purpose, like a lawyer or a doctor or a police officer. You know, there's tangible, purposeful things that are attached to those professions. Being an artist is a bit more complex. We are extremely important. I think artists and designers and creative people of all sorts are extremely um, important to society and to our own culture. We kind of are keeping a record of our culture we're recording history with everything we do and informing and enriching our lives. But that's so much harder to put in an elevator. Um, what's it called? An elevator pitch. When yeah. you have to tell people what, what you do for a living, it's so much harder to explain to people when, you know, you could just, you know, be a lawyer and say, this is what I do. And that's, and that's okay. So, you know, there's a lot of things that go into these um, insecurities, but again, you have to kind of set it aside and just keep moving. You know, I totally agree. I think you you bring up a lot of good points. I, I, artists and creative people have it so tough. I think from the from the jump because everybody around, like all of society, like you said, is, is kind of especially parents. You know, promoting you to to get a, a stable job, a quote real job, um, but like you said it's so boring you know like it's boring to have an elevator pitch where you can just say one word and define yourself as that and i think that it's it's much better to have this kind of weird thing that you do you know that yeah. not weird but necessary like you said it's also difficult then when you have multiple things even to explain to other creative people that get you you know to explain that you are a tattoo artist but you're also a fine artist and you're trying you know you're trying to figure it out yourself um and i think that it's it's really important to kind of be as confident as you possibly can um because you have uh, inner self doubts too i think every every single guest that's been on the show has mentioned self doubt yeah. um i think every creative person can relate to that so when you are describing uh, what you do to other people, when you are in the in the elevator trying to explain to somebody what, what you do, like just to try to trick yourself like we were talking about before, trick yourself into being as confident as possible and be <laughs> like, hell yeah, this is what I do. And then just try to, I guess, limit the amount of words that, that it takes to, to get there. But yeah. 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 It It's really, um, I used to be fearful of like family gatherings or, <laughs> you know, parties where I have to meet people and it, it's just hard to explain to people. I think it's easier actually being a tattoo artist because I could just end it at that. You know, I'm a tattoo artist. Done. Because <laughs> um, people understand that more than, oh, yeah, I make tiny cats and um, I, I put objects on animals that shouldn't <laughs> be there. But like you were saying, it, it feels so much more dry to just be accepting of this job where you have a routine and that's what you do. And I think that life should be a lot more than that. I, I just can't accept settling for, for a job that doesn't make me delve deeper into the way we live, you know? And I guess that's why I think you even brought it up on past shows that, you know, 
you don't choose to be an artist. It kind of chooses you. And I think mm. that's, that's definitely the case for a lot of us. Yeah. And it's just kind of embracing it and going with it. Yeah. Like it's, it's going to be, if you have these ideas, it's going to be, you know, stuck in your head mm -hmm. until you, until you get it out. So you, you have to kind of get it out or else you'll be very, very sad. I think, uh, uh later in life. Yeah. So with all the things that you have going on, um, <laughs> all the different ways that you kind of spend your, your time creatively, how, how do you, uh, balance your time? Do you have kind of a formula for balancing it? Nope. Um, nope. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> and that's just being honest. Um, yeah. I, I try different things. I think what I've been doing recent, actually probably in the past week or two, I was noticing that I was devoting so much of my time and energy to tattooing, which is great. You know, I think tattooing is a very serious job with a lot of responsibility and, you know, you shouldn't be doing it unless you're going to put forth 110% of your efforts. However, I think I'm comfortable enough to where I can assess the situation and realize that I don't necessarily need to be tattooing five days a week. So I'm now going down to four days a week because like I said, it's all encompassing. So I would wake up in the morning and I would, I would finish drawings that I would be tattooing that day for, you know, at least two hours. Then I would get to work a little bit before 11 and then tattoo and work with clients all day until seven, get home around seven thirty, eat dinner, get back on my iPad or the light box. And I am drawing until I go to bed and then I wake up and I repeat. So it's absolutely every moment I am just pushing myself for the work, which is great. But, um, it definitely, it, it kind of pushes out any time that I would have to, to do what I you know, any other artistic endeavor. So, um, I am finally, um, accepting that I need to do something about it rather than complain about it and just feel defeated by it. So I am taking, um, an extra day, which is actually today. And that's how I'm able to sit here and do this podcast. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> so, um, I now have Mondays off and it's not necessarily a day off. It's a day where I can sit in my studio and do the work that I need to get done to get to the next step of making art that I am proud of. So the balancing act is, is definitely ever changing. You know, you just have to try things and see what works, see what doesn't and constantly assess yourself and try to think, okay, whatever it is I'm doing right now, is this being productive? Is this getting me closer to my goals? Is this making me pull further away from them? Have I even got any steps closer to my goal? in the past month or so. So I think um, you just always have to kind of take a step back and assess and, and do something about it. No, I totally agree. I think being really honest with yourself and, and keeping track of, of your progress is really important to try to find that balance. And I think anytime that you're maybe craving more personal work, it is really important to to schedule that in almost and to, mm -hmm. I, I really like having a whole day that you can kind of devote to it. I think it really could help you, uh, to get through the rest of those days when you're not necessarily feeling, uh, that creative and, or just kind of feeling drained from that. Just like we were talking about before with me, you know, setting a timer and having an end point, knowing that there's ice cream after for <laughs> you. And if your ice cream is, you know, a day of personal work, uh, it's really important to kind of have that. So you're not just like in this like endless cycle of, of, where you're not quite happy and you're drained and there is no end in sight, you know? Exactly. So before we let you go, I was wondering, did you have a favorite book or YouTube clip or really anything else that you can draw inspiration from that maybe we could as well? Sure. I'm really guilty of listening to Neil Gaiman's commencement speech. <laughs> yeah. um, that thing has been mentioned so many times. I keep trying to get oh, him really? on the podcast. That but... is so funny. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um, it's so good. It's so good. And like, it's embarrassing how much I listen to it because <laughs> it's just, it's, um, it's just refreshing to be able to, um, have that voice of reason. You know, it's really hard mm -hmm. to find that voice of reason within yourself, but to then be able to just hit a button and there it is. There's Neil telling me exactly what I need to do. Right. It's definitely helpful. But the other thing that I do go to often is, um, this little book called steal like an artist by Austin Kleon. It, it's such an easy read. Like you can sit down with this book and read it in about 15 minutes. 
he kind of goes through, it sounds depressing, but it, you know, it's saying that you can't just make a masterpiece from thin air and that you are comprised of all the people before you. So making art is nothing more than taking all your inspirations and then remixing them and putting them into a blender and then popping out something that's you, you know, you add yourself into it. Um, but it's just like this really great motivational little book that kind of gets you on your feet and back at it, you know? Yeah. I love those, both of those resources. I'm trying to get both of those dudes on the podcast too. Um, (laughs) uh, Austin maybe next year. Um, but yeah. I think, yeah, the, the Neil, uh, speech goes into a lot of things we, we talked about today. So it'd be like, I think a really good thing for people to, to listen to whenever they need that kind of inspiration and the, and steal like an artist is a really good quick read. Um, if you're ever feeling imposter syndrome or anything yes. like that, it, it definitely lets you off the hook in that way. I love that book. Oh yeah. It's great. So great, great nuggets. Thanks Kelly. Yeah, no problem. It is time for the final push. And this is where I ask you to reach to the microphone and grab the shoulder of one of the listeners that you've already really inspired today and just give them your best words of advice and push them to pursue their creative passions. Oh, that's a very hefty job. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, I would say it sounds so simple, but it's really difficult at the same time. But just to just do it, and I say it over and over again to, to people who ask me that, you know, what's your you know, bit of advice and you just have to do it. Things are going to seem really impossible or scary, but you just have to ignore that and just keep going. You know, if you don't, I feel like I'm now quoting Neil over and over again, ever since he mentioned it, but uh, you know, <laughs> it's, it's kind of like, if you don't know how to do something, just pretend you do and just try just do it. Um, I think the other thing that's important to remember is the fear of failure, but also, you know, this guilt of, can I even do this? Am I allowed to do this? I think you have to combat that with the thought of not doing it. What keeps me moving is the thought of not making art and not living this life the way I want to, you know, to be stuck in an office job that I, I don't find to be impactful in any way. You know, I, I think that it's more terrifying to stand still and settle for something less than what I'm capable of. I think everyone should be able to be allowed to dream bigger. And I have this, it's, it's half evil and half great, but I have this kind of sand dial in my head of life, you know, life and time is (laughs) ticking and it's ticking and the sand is going and, you know, we only have a certain amount of time here. So why spend it doing something that you're unhappy doing? And it sounds so simple. Oh, well then just quit your job. I know it's not that simple. Um, but you just have to try because if you don't try, then you don't know what could exist. Yeah. That's the sand dial is, uh, it's a more morbid way to look at it than a clock for some reason. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's, it's usually it's, a person in there, you know, drowning, but <laughs> It's true, though. Uh, you know, there is limited time. So to imagine yourself uh, at the other end of that when the when the sand's almost gone and just looking back at kind of all the all the sand that you wasted. Um, I think it's a really good idea. Um, Kelly, thank you so much for coming on the show today and for giving us that push. Of course. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, and you can find Kelly on her website, which is kellykilligan.com. That's K-E-L-L-Y. K I L L A G A I N uh, dot com. And on Instagram, she is Kelly Killigan. And you can find her tattoos as well on 777tattoos.com. Awesome work. I definitely highly suggest you check it out. Uh, Kelly, thank you again. Thank you so much. Uh, I had so much fun talking with Kelly. Um, and I want to go back to a really, really important point that Kelly said um, about having those creative sessions and not producing anything tangible. Um, anything physical that you can kind of hold up and, and show people or, or yourself and, and be like, here it is. Here's the fruits of my labor. Uh, this is why I didn't hang out with you tonight, Gary. And I know that that can feel disappointing. Like I totally get that, but you still put the time in. Um, you still developed and got better. Even if getting better uh, is simply getting some shit out of your system and, and realizing that something didn't work. It's like Brian Rutenberg talked about recently about, um, having the ability to put a box cutter to your painting or, uh, you know, crumpling up the, the start of your next novel and throwing it in the trash can. Um, you still exercise your creative muscles. You still chipped away at those 10,000 hours and you still took a few steps further, uh, on your kind of creative journey. 
even though they weren't the most exciting steps. But you're doing it. You know, you're living a creative life. And when you're much, much further along the journey, it's those hours um, that you'll kind of look back to and be so proud of yourself that, that you push through those seemingly uh, worthless long hours to, to get where you needed to go. You are in it for the long haul and it is a long journey. So just get used to it and don't let those, those disappointing sessions hold, hold you back from, from putting in more and more of those sessions. Uh, and lastly, trick yourself with, with fake deadlines. I love that idea. Um, and hold off on that ice cream until after you're done, uh, whatever your ice cream, uh, may be, uh, it will be that much sweeter once you've actually, uh, done the work. Like Kelly was saying, instant gratification is bad for us as people. We, we get stuff without having to work for it. And so often those things that we want are bad for us anyway, uh, or they distract us and suck us in and keep us away from what we really want to go for. So. Um, after you're done listening to this, go, go get some work done and then treat yourself to, to ice cream or whatever treat that you have in store. And there's also more of this episode uh, for my Patreon supporters, uh, a little bonus clip for you, as well as some extra stuff from Tom Harold, who was recently on the show. Uh, just some, some cool discussions that we had after the interview. So if you are a Patreon supporter, even a $1 supporter, you get that bonus content. And Kelly gets to listen too because she just became a Patreon supporter of your creative push as well. So thank you to Kelly for coming on the show, for becoming a supporter, and just uh, really helping us out. So again, that's yourcreativepush.com slash Patreon if you want to become a supporter. And the show notes page today, yourcreativepush.com slash Kelly Killigan. That is all I've got for you today. Hopefully you were inspired to go and get your work done. So go and get it done and we will be here for you on thursday with a brand new episode it is our one year birthday on thursday uh, so definitely check that out but go get some amazing work done i love you all and we will see you then bye never miss a push head to yourcreativepush.com slash subscribe to find the easiest way for you to subscribe to the podcast